in this video, we're gonna take a look at a Blue Ink by Noodlers Texas Blue Bonnet. As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to the Blue Ink playlist if you'd like to take a look at a bunch of different blues. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade, like the X in Fox is much darker than the word. Quick goes a little darker to a little lighter to a little darker. Brown goes darker to lighter to darker, six seconds to dry. Medium is almost as dark as the stub, just a little bit lighter, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 14 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both does show color variation, but it's not really coming through in the medium, and the smear test, I don't think you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Twisby Vac 700 with an F a, an FPR broad nib was inked up, used for day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, it definitely shows shading as blue goes lighter to darker. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 10 seconds to dry. Medium is a little bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 21 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both shows no color variation and we don't get any. In the smear test, you could not recover it if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And this actually looks like it is a blue and a kind of very light turquoise color. And that light turquoise feeling that I get is at the top of where this ink is stopping. Now, it, the water went quite a bit farther, and I also see it underneath where the original line was put down. Now the one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's put into water, and you see that blue is very much there, very much bonded with the paper, not budging, but there is that light turquoise that's pushing its way up. I do have a feeling that this may be a bit resistant. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a lot lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does have spots of shading like the X in Fox, the K in Quick, the H in The are all a bit lighter than the rest of the words. Seven seconds to dry. Medium is as dark as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows some color variation and there's some light spotting of it and the medium shows none where there is none. The smear test, you could probably recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it does perfectly well. So if you wanted to use it as a note taker and go back and highlight, you could. And that's very obvious from the chromatography and this water test, where you see the water is barely moving any of this ink once it's had time to bond with the paper. Pen flush is starting to break the ink down and is starting to get some of the white of the paper showing through. One third bleach solution is acting a little bit faster than the pen flush did. Now, this only took water to get out of that 700. And that's a vac filler, which they can sometimes be a pain to clean, so it's good to know that it was easy to clean out of the pen. The next writing sample is done on yellow Rhodia paper. This is done not to see performance change, but to really see the color change that happens for having a yellow background. And we see we go from a blue to a very much 
a turquoise. This can matter if you work in a professional environment where you write on yellow paper and are expected to write with blue. You were writing with blue, but they're not going to believe you. Just to be warned. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with a realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Noodler's Texas Blue Bonnet has a viscosity of 2.37, making it normal. Now, if you're interested in how the viscosity tests and all that's done, then there's a link to that video down in the description. The next writing sample is done on Leustrom 1917 paper. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and six seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, eight seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation. We're really not getting it in the writing and the smear test you couldn't recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's Texas Blue Bonnet has an average dry time of 12 seconds, meaning it dries just a little bit faster than normal. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Now we see that there is a lot coming through when it comes to the medium, but it's not touching the page underneath. The extra fine does lead to a little bit of ghosting, but I don't think this would stop many people from using the back of this page. The medium would though. The medium has a ton of little feathers all the way over it, but not horrible. It's more that it has spread to about a broad, but again, not horrible, not something to stop you from using this paper. The extra fine is quite, or sorry, no, ha, no halo sheen, no shade, obviously. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the medium. It has no feathering. It does have spread to about a fine. It has no uh, halo, no sheen, a couple moments of shade, like the H in the, the B in brown. It took only one second to dry. Very good here, especially considering it's not too bad on the back for 20 pound copy paper. The scrubby shows a tiny bit of color variation and there's only little spots of it up here. In the smear test, you could definitely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Noodler's Texas Blue Bonnet, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I like putting brown with blue. I like putting brown with a lot of different colors. Well, I chose Graf von Faber Castell's Hazelnut Brown. If you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description is links to different color playlists. You can choose one there. So what do I think of Noodler's Texas Blue Bonnet? I like when inks have a tie in historical context, like many of the Drom Ghouls inks do. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? I found that a medium flow fine or medium nib really put down a nice tone and gave a slight peppering of shading, which was enjoyable to see. I hope you got something out of this video. And in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Sailor's Takawa Matsu.